Hi, I'm Manolo Quezon. Let me take you through one final exercise to complete your experience of the dioramas of Philippine history. You have just completed a journey that began two generations ago. The painstaking construction of the dioramas is one of Ayala Museum's earliest efforts since it was established in 1967. Our first director, the historian Carlos Quirino, laid out the story of the Philippines and its people through a series of events brought to life by the woodcarvers of Paete Laguna. That story has come to be known and loved by generations of visitors as a diorama experience. The story we unveiled to the public in 1974 was remarkable in many ways. First, while it was truly national in scope, it covered many regions. Second, it was inclusive in its portrayal of a national story involving Filipinos and foreigners, Christians and Muslims, and events in Luzon, the Visayas, and Mindanao. Third, it presented events not only in terms of politics but also art, culture, technology, and even commerce. Since then, as generations have passed, we have revisited the diorama experience. The original story told by Carlos Quirino was reinterpreted a generation later by Reynaldo Ileto. He envisioned interpreting these events from the bottom up instead of top down as previous generations like to do. If you'd like to know more, you can read this book at the Filipinas Heritage Library at the sixth floor. Today, you are part of the third generation of the Diorama Experience. We are now in a more dynamic, immersive, and interactive world. This means the Diorama Experience is now an opportunity for a Diorama Dialogue. We would like to invite you to engage our Dioramas as a means to creating your own stories, to use each Diorama as a portal to find new ways to connect the past with the present, to view Dioramas in a new way, as an introduction to additional places, people, and events that also form part of the collective story of our being Filipino. Watch as we present just two ways to turn the diorama experience into a conversation, a diorama dialogue. Our dialogue begins by looking at a diorama, any diorama, and seeing how we can approach it in many ways. You've just seen one way. Each diorama is a snapshot, and altogether, they tell a story, the story of our nation and people. But if you were to take each snapshot, it too can form a sub-story, because there will be events directly related to it that came before and after, and that's just chronologically. Let's think really, really big. Ask yourself, do we, do you, belong to a civilization? One that is uniquely Filipino. Well, take any diorama and you could expand its dimensions to at least one aspect of what constitutes a civilization. A civilization is often defined as a complex culture with five characteristics. One, advanced cities. Two, specialized workers. Three, complex institutions. Four, record keeping. And five, advanced technology. But you could explore other connections too. They could be ideas or artifacts, even people or places that reveal something relevant and related too. You know this figure, Jose Rizal, is central to our national identity. Practically every public plaza pays tribute to him. His novels are required reading and are arguably the founding documents of our nationhood. Here is one of our Rizal dioramas, Rizal finishing his most famous novel, Noli Me Tangere. It's one of two Rizal dioramas we have. The other one is his execution. Each of them belongs in the long thread of our national story. But together, these two dioramas tell a mini-story, the impact of Rizal as writer and activist. But take different aspects of this snapshot. Here's another way this diorama can be part of another story, our literary development. You could link Rizal to writers that came before. Let's take one, Balagtas, and his epic poem, Florante at Laura. We study that as a classic of Tagalog poetry. Now let's take another, the first Filipino novel, Ninay, 
by Pedro Paterno. You could connect it to another innovation, the first Filipino short story in English, Dead Stars by Paz Marquez Benitez. This would be the story of our writing different kinds of creations in different languages. Can you think of others? Our lives in a time of a pandemic have made us much more aware of public health and its challenges. The frontliner heroes we all love and admire can trace their occupations to Brother Juan Clemente's hospital way back in the 16th century. You could connect Brother Clemente with other institutions established by the Catholic Church, such as our diorama on the construction of the University of Santo Tomas. You could connect it to the story of healing, to the line of healers and indigenous cures before colonialism, to evangelistic works through the healing of the sick, and to our growing appreciation for alternative medicine today. But there are other stories that could be told through this snapshot. Could you spot six degrees of separation from Brother Juan Clemente to today's frontliners? Brother Juan Clemente and the Franciscan Order played a major role in the foundation of the oldest hospitals in the country, the San Juan de Dios and the San Lazaro Hospitals. That, in turn, tells the story of faith-based hospitals established in our country. The earliest one was the Hospital Real in Cebu in 1565. This includes two, the Manila Sanitarium established by the Seventh-day Adventists, or St. Luke's Medical Center established by the Episcopalian Church. Another story is the creation of public hospitals from what used to be private ones. San Lazaro is again another example. The next stage would be the creation of a national teaching hospital, the Philippine General Hospital or PGH, and of specialist hospitals, the National Orthopedic, National Children's Hospitals, or the Kidney, Lung, and Heart Centers. But it also tells the story of treatments for Hansen's disease in the Philippines, from San Lazaro to the island of Culion under the Americans, to the establishment of Tala, which is also the story of fighting the stigma associated with the disease commonly known as leprosy. Or take Brother Juan Clemente, a friar. After him would come doctors, including the first Filipino doctors, and also first Filipino nurses. Any one of these different paths can take us to today's frontliners to whom we owe so much. A picture, they say, is worth a thousand words. That is why the diorama experience has been a beloved and powerful way to tell our history, then and now. A picture is also a portal. It can be your entryway into a new vista where knowledge and imagination can combine to tell stories from a different, fresh, or more intimate perspective. That is what we mean by the diorama experience being your introduction to the next stage of engagement with them, the diorama dialogue. In showing you just a few ways to engage in a conversation with individual events and those they can be connected with, whether through persons, places, things, or ideas, you are making our national story your own story and adding your own meanings and values to a conversation we need to have across generations and with each other. The dioramas may have grown old with you and you may have changed your perspective with every visit. A diorama dialogue is an opportunity to see them anew. You have it in your hands to add to our national story to make it more diverse, representative, inclusive, and transformative. We can't wait for what stories will emerge from your dialogue with us. Visit the Dioramas page on the Ayala Museum website to participate in the Diorama Dialogue. <laughs>